Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing our discussion of autocorrelation tests, and uh, we are picking up from where we left last video when we were discussing the Durbin-Watson test. What is good, what is bad about it, and how we might improve over the developments of Durbin and Watson. And today we are doing exactly that. We are discussing the Bruce Godfrey test, or as it's alternatively called, the Alam test. Obviously, Bruce Godfrey stands for two surnames of the econometricians that developed this test, and uh, Alam stands for Lagrange multipliers, that is the mathematical concept behind the development of this test. Without further ado, let's crack down to our spreadsheet and see how can we apply this test in Excel. So we have already got our simple linear regression that relates the returns of the Tesla stock to the relevant benchmark, S&P 500. We have calculated the expected returns and the residuals, that is the differences between the actual returns and the expected returns. In finance, they are also referred to as abnormal returns. And we have our Durbin Watson stat calculations from the previous video. But today we're concerned with the uh, Bruce Godfrey test or the Alam test. To apply it, and um, actually I might want to talk about why one wants to apply it over the Durbin Watson test. Well, it's pretty simple. First of all, the Bruce Godfrey test allows one to explicitly derive p values and confidence intervals using well behaved distributions, that is, the F distribution and the chi squared distribution uh, that all of us know. And also, the Bruce Godfrey test, perhaps most importantly, allows one to explicitly test for the autocorrelation structure of uh, legs higher than one. So in our example, let's test for the serial correlation structure of flag three. So we'll test whether returns lagged up to three days from today actually influence the returns today. To do that, we'll just need to lag the respective residuals that are here in column J by one day. So here we'll just uh, lag it by one day, then we'll lag it by two days, and then we'll lag it by three days. And then bottom by clicking it all the way down will get us the lagged residuals that we want to perform our Bruce Godfrey test. For Bruce Godfrey test, it is also often assumed that lagged residuals for days when you don't actually have those lagged residuals, for example, for day one, you haven't got any of the lagged residuals that you want, because obviously that's the start of your observation period. For most of the cases in Bruce Godfrey tests, it's mostly assumed that those are just zeros. So we can just put that zero here, drag it over there, drag this over there and over there as well, and uh, perform our estimations on the whole sample without reducing the number of observations, the sample size, the degrees of freedom. So arguably it will enhance the power of our test. That's all we need in terms of data preparations for our test. We can actually now proceed to the regression estimation. The Bruce Godfrey test um, is actually a family of tests that uses the multiple regression concept to test for some properties of residuals. Here we test for autocorrelation, which is that uh, current residuals are being influenced by lagged residuals. So we need to estimate a regression model where we would have our residual, unlagged residual, the residual as it is, as a dependent variable, and uh, all of the regressors that went into our original model as uh, independent variables, as well as the lagged values of residuals as our additional independent variables. So here we would still have our residual beta estimated and uh, our S&P 500 return will go into the model as an independent variable. But most importantly, we will also have the lagged residual that we have prepared previously as three additional independent variables. So to estimate this multiple regression, we need to select an area of five rows and five columns and apply the linest function. So here our y's, so our dependent variables, are going to be unlagged residuals 
and our independent variables are going to be our S&P 500 return, so the original regressors. If you would have more initial regressors in your model, you would have to include all of them in the Bruce Godfrey test estimation, as well as the three uh, lagged residuals, which is just because in our case we test for serial correlation of lag three or less. You can test for serial correlation of any lag, I mean up to a reasonable lag length, uh, because if you have um, a lot of lags and few observations, the statistical power of your test would be ridiculously low, so just keep that in mind, but go in uh, up to lag length of like 12 or even 24 on re reasonably large samples is not something unheard of. So keeping that in mind, we'll just leave it up to three because the concept is pretty clear and the concept is really universal regardless of how many uh, lags are you taking. So we'll just select our independent variables at that stage. Uh, we need the constant, the intercept, the alpha over here, so we put one, and we need the additional um, statistics, the additional output, that is standard errors, R squared, ESS, RSS, and so on and so forth. So we press one here as well, and we enforce this formula using shift, control, enter. And we see here that we got our betas for our autoregressive model, that is, how are current residuals being influenced by lag residuals of lag 1, 2, and 3. And uh, here, uh, the Bruce Godfrey LM test actually allow us to apply two different hypothesis testing logics to derive p-values and confidence intervals. So to explicitly test how likely it is that there is no autocorrelation. Um, the first logic, and perhaps the simplest one, would be just to use the FSTAT. And um, the FSTAT is reasonably uh, easy to understand, the logic is pretty clear. That is, the FSTAT can be used to test for the joint significance of a number of regressors. So in our case, we've got four regressors, and uh, we actually care about only three of them, the lagged residuals. The fourth is just kept there for good measure. Uh, so first of all, we need to calculate the uh, raw FSTAT of this uh, multiple regression model. Uh, to do that, we can just divide the R squared, which is reported over here in the third row on the left, by mi one minus R squared, and then we can multiply it by the number of the degrees of freedom and divide it by the number of regressors. So in our case, it's four. And we'll get 0 0.0709, and uh, we actually can compare it to the FSTAT that is calculated by the Linus function, and we'll be happy that we achieved the same result. Now we need to adjust it for uh, the variables that we actually care about. Logic here is reasonably hard to understand, but still pretty intuitive. That is, obviously, when we estimate the uh, initial OLS equation, we do it so the residual is uh, uncorrelated with the initial regressor. So if we would just regress our residual onto S&P 500 returns, we'll get a beta of zero, and uh, R squared of zero. So we actually want to test how much does the model improve when we include three lagged residuals. Uh, so in this case, we'll just need to multiply our FSTAT by the number of uh, regressors in the original model, so four, and divide it by the number of lags that we're using. So here it's three. So our adjusted FSTAT would be slightly higher at 0.0945. And now we can uh, convert this FSTAT, adjusted FSTAT, into the p-value that we can treat as the probability that there is no autocorrelation. This probability is also interpretable as the probability that all three lags do not explain the behavior of the residual. And um, in our case, that's equivalent to the statement that there is no autocorrelation for obvious reasons. So to do that, we'll just need to uh, apply the FDIST right-tailed function, and uh, we'll take the adjusted FSTAT as our X. Our number of the degrees of freedom uh, will be 3, as we have 3 lags, and uh, 1,253, as that's the number of the degrees of freedom in the uh, multiple regression estimation. And we'll get 96.31%. That means that it's uh, very, very unlikely that autocorrelation is present. It's 
outstandingly likely that um, these parameters are statistically indistinguishable from zero and that this model doesn't really explain the behavior of the residuals at all. But actually, the second logic of uh, logical relation testing using the Bruce Godfrey LM framework it has been proven to be more uh, precise, and it is using the chi-squared statistic. It has been proven that the expression number of observations times r-squared follows the chi-squared distribution with the number of the degrees of freedom that is equal to the number of lags. So we can calculate our chi-squared statistic um, just multiplying our the number of observations, 1,258, onto the r-squared that is still reported in the third row on the left, and we'll get our chi-squared statistic of 0 0.2847, and we can convert this chi-squared statistic into the p-value that would be interpretable exactly in a similar fashion, that is, um, the probability that there is no autocorrelation in the data using the chi-squared uh, right-tailed distribution with uh, the input value uh, x uh, being the chi-squared stat we've just calculated and the number of degrees of freedom being 3, the number of lags that we picked. And we see that the result is really similar um, and uh, here p-value tells us exactly the same, that it's very unlikely that autocorrelation is present in our data. And uh, that's all there is for the Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier test for autocorrelation. Hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like under this video if that's indeed true. In the comments below, please leave any suggestions on further videos on business, economics, or finance you would like me to record. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for the next video when we will discuss the box pairs and long box Q tests for autocorrelation. Stay tuned, and thank you very much.